This film tells the story of a, an expedition by the Wessex to County Clare in Ireland in 1964. Well, about 13 of us went out in a minibus and Phil Davies came along with his family as well. We saw the sights of Ireland and then we decided we really ought to look do something towards going caving. That was after we'd been down on the beach of course. We scouted around a few of the risings and a few of the sinks. We didn't really know what was what, to be honest, except for the main ones. But we did know Pol Nagolum. And we, this was the, the epic trip of the whole week, uh, fortnight. You can see Vic Bennett here going down the slope into Pol Nagolum. Vic was to be the uh, cause of a bit of an adventure later on, on this trip. And this is Les Teasdale, who at the time, was, I think at that time, was chairman of the Wessex. And he just had an operation for a cartilage on his knee. So he's uh, not in the best of shape. But anyway, we pressed on into the cave and I was keen to take the camera in and maybe get some film. However, it didn't work out that way. Vic Bennett slashed his, his hand on a shard of rock a bad gash and we had to come out and Vic had, Vic had to go back and get stitched. And behind the cottage where we were staying we found a little dig. The Irishman that owned the field was quite happy that we'd be able to dig it. So here we are getting to work. That's uh, Nick Hart stripped off there with a bucket pulling up some rock. And at the bottom there is, is Atty, popular member of the team. He was the artist on the trip you saw earlier. And meanwhile, Nick and his girlfriend Pam decided to, uh, it's time to take a break. I think in the background you can see Keith Armani carrying on with the dig. We got down about 20 feet and almost into airspace when it was time to leave it for, uh, for the holiday, ended. And as we heard as soon as we got back, the Irish fellow that owned the land had thrown most of the stuff back down. Phil Davis did f manage to find a rather interesting little hole. We weren't sure again what it was. So we, uh, we dropped a, an electron ladder down it and went out to explore it. And here you can see Nick bottoming, which was only a, a 15 foot pitch. He's about to be followed by Atty. And you'll see something fall shortly. Hattie managed to drop his carbide lamp. Hattie was a lovely man, deaf as a post. 
most of the time he wore an ear, a hearing aid, but of course he didn't ta wear it when he went underground, which made, made it quite interesting when we did the filming. There he is, reaching the bottom. One night in the uh, in the pub, Atty got cornered by a, it was obviously the village drunk, and we heard him um, going on at Atty for about two or three minutes, in the end we went over and rescued Atty, and we asked him what the Irish brother had been saying to him, and he said, I don't know, he said, I turned off my hearing aid. Anyway, this pretty little cave uh, proceeded along a rift, with some quite nice colours in it just for a bit we really got excited and thought we were going down dip into something important. We passed the little inlet. There's a stream coming in from the surface. And there's the water coming in there. And then Nick led on down the passage. We really were getting quite excited at this time. Was it Virgin Cave? Seemed a bit unlikely, but uh, we were going to find out. It would really be nice to have the camera a breakthrough, wouldn't it? What a nice clean little water wash passage. Nice scalloping. Atty bringing up the rear. He, as I said, Atty was deaf and he wasn't really um, <laughs> taking the orders where to move and when to stop too well. And that jagged flake there is the sort of thing that Rick, uh, Rick had gashed his hand on in Pol Golem. It's a good job Atty didn't because when, when Vic went to get stitched, the, uh, the lady doctor didn't give him any, any anaesthetic. There's Nick on a, partly to make a decent picture for me to be honest, crawling along these ledges up in the roof. Still using carbide, you'll notice. And good old Atty still wobbling along at the back. But soon we were headed for disappointment and uh, when Nick rounded this corner he found the dreaded words UBSS. It had been already been found and surveyed by the UBSS. But it was the most exciting part holiday. It wasn't much.
In the middle of the holiday, we split up into separate groups and went to explore different parts of Ireland. Nick, Pam and I went in Keith's car down to the Dingle Peninsula. Um, I, think, I think by this stage Nick and Pam were beginning to think they were being followed. And in the background there is, I think that's McGilly Cuddy's Reeks, the highest of mountains in Ireland. And we'd uh, just bivouacked here for, for, for one night and this was taken early morning before we'd set out to try and climb the hills behind there. There weren't many people about in those days down there. Very basic breakfast. And that's, uh, that's yours truly there, eating some baked beans I think before we set off. Didn't have a beard in those days. As I say, we t attempted to climb the McGilly Cuddy's Reeks but unfortunately the weather clamped down and we only got up to about uh, two and a half thousand feet and that really was the end of the holiday from, apart from an odd caving trip. It wasn't too long before we wanted to go further afield and Pete Greenfield and John Thomas and I went across to County Clare. Uh, Les Halls had introduced us to the landlord of the Irish Arms and Miss Dunvana and we got some fairly um, basic rooms there. With a, I remember we had a turf fire in the bedroom. And this was an Easter trip. And in those days uh, County Clare was very remote. That's the little village of uh, Doolin, which I believe is quite popular for folk singing now, up on the... And this is up on the top of the Cliffs of Moher, which is the sh highest vertical um, cliff in the British Isles, I believe. Um, again, we met one dear old Irish lady up there, and that was it. We had the place to ourselves. Now, I believe, there are co ice cream stalls and coach parks, and it's on the main tourist rag. Brian's Tower this is, which stands just on the top of the cliffs, and Pete managed to get up at least a little way up to wave out the window at me. This was our first attempt to cave in Ireland, uh, to do Fisher Street Pot. We met an Irish chap who said there wasn't much chance of getting into the system because it would be flooded because there had a lot of rain. We didn't really believe him, I mean, as you can see we filled our carbide lamps slung a ladder down the pitch and this is Griff about to go down to the to the streamway about 30 or 40 feet below quite an easy pitch really we thought we'd better lifeline it you can see here that the Irish has thrown a lot, rather a lot of rubbish down it now that's not the best lifelining te technique you'll see these days but seems to survive. And then I took the camera at the bottom of the pitch, found the place was in flood, so we made the best of a bad job, inflated the goon suits and went for a float down the river Doolin. And this is up on the Burren now a World Heritage Site, it's one of the best areas of limestone, or certainly in Europe. And this is the hot old Polna Gollum, which was perhaps the uh, second best trip we did in, on that little excursion. We did manage to get down to Polna Ionian and see the big stow. And this is a shot from the bottom of Polna Gollum. reason I'm on a little ladder that we use there to get down a 10 foot drop 